In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some basic registrations on a cinema organ. Now, there's many, many possible sounds that you can get from any cinema organ, so it's all about experimentation. But for those of you who maybe have access to a Wurlitzer or a Compton, or maybe in America a, a Wurlitzer, a Barton, whatever, um, or if you have a, a home digital theatre organ or an electronic organ, you might want to explore some of the sounds in your instrument. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to mix some basic settings. There's also a video that explains about how the stops work, the different sounds of a cinema organ, so it may be worth watching that first before watching this video. In a, a traditional pipe organ, the main sound of the organ comes from what we call the diapason. It's a metal pipe and it sounds a bit like this. Whereas in a cinema organ, the foundation sound is called the tibia. In word it says they're made of wood, some manufacturers use metal, um, but it has a lovely, lush, warm sound. It was described by one organist as the glue that holds all the other stops together. A beautiful sound there from the tibia claws of pipe. <clears throat> now, first of all, let's talk about the tibias. I'm going to pop down the tibia eight foot stop and the four foot stop. Sometimes this is labeled piccolo. I've also turned on, on the tremulants, these are the things that, these boxes that make the wobble in the organ, the vibrato as we call it, I put on the tremulant for the tibia rank. And that means we'll get that beautiful sound. Have a little listen, <coughs> excuse me, to the lovely sound of the eight and four foot tibia. That's on the top keyboard, the main keyboard of the organ. If I put all the tibias on, I put the 16, the eight, the four and the two, this will give us, I suppose you might call it, a chorus of tibias. Now, if you use the highest number, the two, on this organ, and the 16, we'll get a really big pipe and a really small pipe. It creates a kind of a hollow tibia setting. And one of the most famous registrations was used a lot by an organist called Jesse Crawford. And uh, it's the 16 and the 4 foot. And it's lovely if you play open harmony. Beautiful sound there from the tibias. Now, some of the other ranks you can mix with the tibias um, include the flutes, the strings, and the voxes. So let's now try, for example, the tibia 8-foot and the vox humana 8-foot. So let's have a listen to that. Now let's add some strings. We've got the violin and the violin celeste. That makes this kind of sound. Now you see there how the strings added a little bit more bite to the tibia. Very, very nice sound there. To make that a bit brighter, add the octave coupler on the keyboard that you're playing on. That's sometimes a black stop. Um, on this organ, it's a little white stop, and that basically plays an octave for me on each of those stops. We can even go an octave lower. So octaves are a really easy way of adding variety to the sound. 
Now, another registration, which is nice for ballads, is the trumpet, the diapason, and the tibia, all at eight foot. Put the trems on, and this is lovely for ballads. Really nice sound there from the trumpet and the tibia and that diapason cutting through. Now, if you've got a slightly bigger organ, you might have some extra ranks. So here's a, a little sound called the kinura. Now, the kinura on its own doesn't sound very impressive. It's quite a thin, buzzy kind of rank. And if you add it to the tibias, it can add a little bit of fizz to the sound, something like this. creates a really nice little bit of buzz from the music. Sometimes when you're playing it's nice to have a solo instrument so we could have the clarinet on producing a little sound a little bit like, uh, like this for example. Lovely sound there from the clarinet. A beautiful registration is the string ranks, <clears throat> so put the violins and the strings on, and the vox humanas at the various different pitches, so no, no tibia this time, just voxes and strings, beautiful shimmering sound <clears throat> excuse me, from the organ. Now, if you're playing perhaps a, a very lively melody line, try some of the, the more punchy trumpets and reed ranks. I've got the English horn here. And let's try something a little bit more on the punchy line. Very nice lively sounds there. You can also mix the stops. Let's do a four foot tibia and let's put the glockenspiel on. And that sounds a little bit like this. So you get the tibia in the back and then little peppy bits. To get that kind of more blackpool y sound, put some eights on, tibias, voxes, strings, go through the fours and the twos, put the bells on, the glockenspiel, put the piano on as well, keep the sixteens off, and you get a very blackpool y kind of sound. <laughs> Playing, though, one little tip that I'm going to give you, which is really is important, is to make sure that the right hand melody is not overpowered by the accompaniment stops. Let me press one of the registration buttons here on the solo keyboard, the top keyboard, and I've got flute, vox, and four foot tibia. Now, if I put some stops down on the bottom keyboard, if I put all these on, it will just drown the top keyboard out. See there, you can't hear it, can you? So what you have to remember is, is that the lower keyboard almost must be doing what its name is, accompanying. The little concert flute, the little flute at eight foot, think of that as almost like a little tibia. The tibia is often too powerful for the accompaniment, especially if you've only just got one tibia. So keep that off and only use it if you've got a really big sound on the top keyboard. I'm going to put the, fourth, the eight foot flute on and listen to this lovely registration here. Little light, uh, light pedal stops over here. But now listen to the top keyboard, how lovely this actually sounds.
See how that works? Now, if I've got a, a little bit more on the top keyboard, I can add to the concert flute maybe the violins, the strings, and the vox. See how that accompaniment works? for the end. So on the lower keyboard, if you're playing very gentle numbers, try just the eight foot flute and maybe some strings. It's a bit bigger if we're doing a much more livelier sort of piece to finish with, then we can bring in some fours, we can bring in the tibia at eight foot, because the right hand will be able to take it. that with the left hand it must accompany gentle eight foots are nice adding a few more eights to enhance it then add the four foot or the octave on the lower keyboard to brighten those up a little bit brighter and then for bigger settings on the on the main melody keyboard bring your tibias and your diapasons in but try and use those only when you're doing those so i hope that's been interesting some great sounds there from this lovely medium-sized Wurlitzer organ and as we say it's all about experimenting. Hope you've enjoyed this video please comment positively at the bottom hit share or subscribe and do take a look at some of the other videos here on Keyboard Skills Pro. My name's Tom Horton thanks for watching.